it grew to a point to where I remember the enemy finally saying, I've got you now. And the grip that he had on my life was like nothing I'd ever felt before. And he did everything in his power to kill, steal, and destroy my life. So as, as far back as I can remember, I have had Jesus' presence in my life. I grew up in a Christian home. My parents always made sure I was in church. I remember saved at the age of 11. I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, me and my best friend was climbing a tree. I remember I slipped, started falling. And as I was falling, the images of of Jesus' hand just coming down out of the clouds. And right at that time when his hand was about to get to me, I caught a limb and I stopped falling. But at that moment, I knew Jesus was my Lord and Savior. And now I wanted to ask him into my heart and to save me. I remember I dated a girl all through high school. I made the decision to ask her for her hand. We got married shortly after I graduated high school. It's like when we packed up that vehicle and took off to another state, we kind of left Jesus in the rearview mirror. Instead of asking him to go before us, we just went on our own and didn't put him in the middle of our marriage. And by doing that, by me failing to be the Christian leader that I'm called to be in a marriage, it came crumbling down real quick. And within three years, I'd found out she had committed adultery. And I remember at that moment, I'd never felt pain as in that moment when I found out. I felt so betrayed and couldn't believe that someone who was supposed to love me forever could turn their back on me and be unfaithful. When I felt that pain, instead of looking to Jesus, when he was standing there saying, I know exactly how you feel. I turned my back against them. And I started searching for every worldly substance to get rid of the pain that I was feeling. I was already hanging out with people that were partying on the weekends. I dove in to that lifestyle and drugs were introduced. And I remember thinking, I can handle this. Deal with the pain all week long, go to work, and then I would erase it all on the weekends until the weekends weren't enough. I had to have it on Monday just to get to work. And then I had to have it on Tuesday to the point to where I had to have it every day just to function. What, no matter what it was, anything, I had to have something. Everything around me was crashing down and it happened quick. You know, there was a point to where, you know, the drugs just took a grip of my life to where it took me down a really dark place really fast. I remember the last day that I ever put something into my body, it was enough to where my heart probably should have stopped. And that day I ran from demons in my life. I mean, they chased me all day and I woke up in a jail cell. And praise the Lord, in that jail cell, Jesus was right there beside me, he whispered into my ear, this is not who I created you to be. I will either use you in here or you can turn your life back to me and I'll use you outside of here. And luckily I had an aunt in Georgetown, Texas who had heard about Oak Ridge Disciple House out in Florence. And when my parents shared what I was going through, she said, I know just the place. And two weeks in, we're sitting in chapel in certain scripture we're reading. In my heart, I knew I could not beat addiction by myself. And I knew if I was going to have any hope, Jesus was going to have to take it from me. So I'm sitting there and I'm getting this prayer prepared. And I go to pray. And before I could even pray it in my mind, Jesus simply whispered, done. And I was like, well, Jesus, I didn't even, you didn't even let me ask. Like I was getting ready to pray, please take addiction from me. And he's like, Tyler, what did I just say? Done. But he also said, now you have to learn how to live for me. So I stayed for six months learning how to do it, 
how to daily surrender to Jesus and to truly live for Him on a daily basis. Saying that now, looking back, I praise the Lord I was saved at 11 and accepted His as my Lord and Savior because that's when God started holding me within His right hand. And the enemy did everything he could to take the grip of God off of my life, but nothing can do that. You know, Scripture says, those that the Father has given me will never be taken out of my mighty hand. And I praise the Lord for that.